decided to, they had, well, they had a, a solution. Basically, the same hardware is shared between AIX and the AS400, the I-series. It's called, it was called System I and System, or I-series and P-series. So uh, if we have if we have the same uh, hardware, we can maybe take uh, some of the core of uh, some of the uh, AX kernel, port it over to the S400, use it to support TCP/IP, to support all the services, and this is exactly exactly what they did. As a result, what we see is uh, we have an we have Unix uh, compliant environments running on the. Uh, uh, AS400, and two different file systems. One, which is the old legacy file system, and another one which supports Unix, okay? Um, so again, we'll see some applications of this in a moment. Well, we have uh, two different uh, Unix environments. One is called the Q-shell. The Q-shell is basically, uh, it was uh, written specifically for OS, for OS 400, for the operating system. It supports IPSIDIC. It's mandatory if you want to run any Java or any MQ, WebSphere MQ, which is a uh, successful message uh, brokering uh, software. And there is something which is called PASE or PACE, and what it does, it supports binary supports of AX programs. I can take, for, I can take a, any binary that was compiled on AIX, on one platform, place it on a file system in a specific place on the AS400 and execute it on the AS400, okay? So on one hand, I can take something like OpenSSH, port it over, which is good. On the other hand, I can take Netcat and port it over, which is not very good. Okay, and as I said, while QShell is mandatory for Java and MQ, Pace is mandatory if you want to run things like SSH, if you want to, if someone is, uh, uh, wants to uh, write uh, or create web applications uh, on the S400, uh, they must basically install Pace in order to uh, write uh, web applications. We also have uh, two file systems now. One is the root file system, which is just like any uh, commonly known file system that you are familiar with. It supports a hierarchical uh, folder uh, system, and uh, you can place in it, well, anything that you like. It can be uh, text files, uh, image files, JPEGs, Word documents, exe files, anything that you like. Of course, some of those uh, programs uh, that I spoke about uh, uh, that are uh, compliant, fully compliant with uh, AIX, also in this file system. And we have a, uh, the qsys.lib file system, which is a subdirectory of the root file system and contains access to the original libraries, the original objects, all of the programs, uh, files, data areas, and whatever uh, exists inside the uh, AS400 libraries. I can move, we can also move things between those file systems, okay? So if I take, for example, if I have a, a, a what we call a, on the AS400 a safe file, an equivalent of a tar file, an archive file, okay? We can today take it from the original library, copy it, to the uh, root file system, zip it, send it via email to another place, to another location, and then re reverse the process and recreate those objects. So we don't have, we don't need to have any special protocols or any special tools, just plain common file manipulation uh, methods that we are all familiar with. Now, the combination of these uh, advancements of these uh, changes, technological changes, that again, most of them, are, well, all of them, did not originate within this platform, but were external influences, created some really peculiar things. For example, 
if we take a look at what is the program on the AS400. Okay, it is, so to speak, object-oriented, in which I mean that uh, we don't deal with files that I can copy and move around and manipulate on a binary basis when I speak about uh, the uh, objects. For example, I, I speak of uh, things that are encapsulated. As far as I can see, if I look at a program that was compiled on the AS400, I can see an object of type PGM. It has a set of attributes, set of metadata that are specific to programs. There's a shared set of uh, attributes between all, between all objects. Uh, and a program is created usually either by compiling source code or by restoring it from an archive, okay? And therefore the paradigm is that the file is a file and a program is a program. In other words, if I, if I again, if I look at the, uh, at the uh, PC world or the Unix world, I can take an exe file, it was called x.exe, I rename it to x.jpg, and of course it's not a JPEG file, but it masks itself to be something else. I can't do it on the S400, okay? I can't take a PGM object and tell it, now you will appear as if you are something else. It's something that can't be done, or can it? To call a program, traditional program, we see a, uh, do you see anything? Yes. I write a command, call, program name, parameters, and uh, apparently all is well. Now, I did a mini poll among not a very uh, large uh, set of people who are uh, developers, administrators, and experts of the system. I did it a couple of, a couple of weeks ago the beginning of November, and I asked them a question. Suppose I ask them that I remove, I have a, an AS400, okay? I remove the compiler, and I remove the ability to restore from an archive. Can I still create a new program on the AS400? Now, the question that I got, I asked 12 people, I got 11 people who said, no, it's impossible. And another one who didn't want to commit to anything, because he knew that it was, it, it was a catchy question. And of course, the answer is that it's not enough. Uh, the old restrictions are only relevant to the QSYS.lib file system. So what's stopping me to upload the Java program? and to execute it. Now, if you can see, if you look at here, to call a program on the, a regular program on the S400, I do the call command. To execute a Java program, it's a different creature. It's a completely different creature. It's not an exe file. It's like comparing Java to exe, okay? There are different creatures. And what's more, so I don't have to compile it because I can uh, transfer the bytecodes directly from my PC to the, to, to the server, and I don't have to restore it into a library from a tape archive. I simply FTP the class file into the uh, new root file system, and it's ready for execution. Um, on my website, which you will be, uh, uh, I will refer to you later, you, you will see the, uh, uh, the address again. Uh, I show examples on how to uh, execute uh, AIX commands, okay? How to take, uh, for example, uh, a netcat, install it on the AS400 and uh, create a reverse shell speaking to the server or scan the, the, the entire network from the S400. It's not, a, it's not a usual culprit, okay? It's not something that people are usually looking at. They, they think, okay, we have something we can run, we, can, we have to write in COBOL or in RPG to execute code. No, you don't have to. You, can, you have other venues of execution. So, how are we dealing with it? How is the industry dealing with it? Well, the industry is mostly looking where there's light under the street light. They're not looking in the shadows. Now, what do I mean by that? 
we saw that we, for example, uh, created a very large uh, attack surface because of the, uh, all of the connectivity, the new connectivity was added to this uh, system. So what are people doing it? Basically, IBM has failed to uh, address this uh, and to provide proper tools for properly managing uh, access, managing permissions uh, to the system. But they did write exit programs, hooks, API hooks. They said, if you want to, you can write your own code. Okay, so there is a, a small uh, buzzing uh, and energetic sub-industry uh, of uh, security, AS400 specific security, that provides all kinds of security tools. But the problem is that they can only manage whatever they have hooks to. Okay, so not everything is hooks. If we look at the uh, DB2 connectivity, I can connect to the uh, AS400 from another server, I have two ways. One of them is via ODBC. This is, well, pretty much secured. But the, other, the second one is something, a protocol called DRDA. And ODBC is very well secured, so I can m authenticate, I can, I can intervene in the process of authentication and decide if this user can uh, log in to use, to use ODBC. Uh, even though uh, it's a valid user, I can decide that this user can't do it, but I can also track, audit, and uh, see what this user does. This is, but this is only for ODBC. DRDA, which is a standard way for, for two DB2, different DB2s to connect to each other, talk to each other, is not covered. So nobody's addressing it, okay? Because IBM didn't provide the hooks. Another example uh, that I'm going to show you right now is uh, something which is even uh, more interesting. We started in an environment in which we had dumb terminals, okay? So when I have a dumb terminal, it can only be used to uh, connect to my system and to run whatever uh, applications uh, uh, are written on the, on the server. It only runs the terminal itself. When I have a PC, suddenly this PC is a general purpose machine, okay? So I can write, I can, I can, on one hand, I have one window which is open to a, a client that works with the uh, AS400, and I will have another, another window that is open that contains Excel, okay, at both times. And, gentlemen, we can abuse it because Apparently, what IBM did is that they provided a command called start PC command. And what happens when I run this is that, I can show in demonstration, you know what? Best you. I can do several things. For example, if I uh, select this menu, this is a live system, okay? If I type one, one says all the new furniture on eBay. Okay, now what happens is that I have a new uh, browser uh, window opening up. I'm sorry, this is a slow PC, but it will connect to eBay. And uh, it's a great way to, uh, for example, to uh, create client-side integration, okay? I want to send an Excel to a business user and to open it from inside the application, the application menu. But I can do other things, other stuff. Okay, for example, no, not here, for example, uh, if we look at the, okay, Let me show you what happens when I run option three on the menu. First of all, we're going to look at the list of users that I have. Local users, okay, we see a set of users, of local users on my, uh, on my laptop. Now I return to the application and I type three. <coughs> Work with printed output. Okay, great. I work with printed output, whoever was 
noticed it, there was something happened, something else happened, something flashed. If I go now 